Hello everyone. Today, risk assessment and risk management for them. As a society increasingly requires that the risks associated with facilities or infrastructure be made transparent, risk-informed approaches need to become a fundamental component of dam safety programs. The geotechnical profession has made significant progress in understanding how concepts of reliability-based design can provide more insight into the safety of a construction. Methods have been developed to use probabilistic approach to solve geotechnical issues. First, about margin of safety, factor safety, and failure probability. Here is a distribution of a safety factor um, with small uncertainties in the analysis parameters. The distribution is rather thin, and the failure probability is represented by the blue area under the curve, where the safety factor can be less than one. When you have large uncertainty, the distribution is much flatter, and the zone where the safety factor can be less than one is much larger, as shown in red here. And here is a real life case study of a pile construction, uh, four or five years apart. Uh, the first analysis had a safety factor of 1.8, but a large uncertainties and quite diffuse distribution. The annual failure probability was one in 100 years. The design done a few years ago after a large uh, site investigation program been carried out, the safety factor, the mean value was 1.4, the requirement was 1.5, but the failure probability was one in 10,000 years as shown here, the distribution shows much different failure probabilities. So a higher safety factor does not necessarily mean a larger safety margin. A more positive wording than failure probability is the reliability index. And that is simply the distance between the, safe, the mean safety factor and the value of one divided by the standard deviations, which represents the uncertainty in the distribution. Reliability is synonym with trustworthiness. There's a perception that the design with the safety factor greater than or equal to 1.5 has to be safe. But the safety factor 1.5 actually represents an entire spectrum of failure probabilities. In a conventional deterministic analysis, we look at a nominal case, one scenario, and we do not look at all plausible outcomes. In a probabilistic analysis, we identify the uncertainties that are key to safety, and we attempt to include all the plausible scenarios, their likelihood and their consequence. Risk from an engineer's point of view is a function of the hazard, threat, and consequences. And rather than looking at these definitions, I'm going to just illustrate for a dam, you first evaluate the hazards. What are the hazards? Earthquake, uh, 10,000 year storm. What is the likelihood for each of these threats? Uh, then you look at the performance of the dam. How will the dam perform under each of the threats? And then you look at the consequence. Who and what is in harm's way? How susceptible are these elements? and how much harm will be caused. To reduce risk, one should reduce the hazard or and reduce the consequence, reducing the consequence by reducing the vulnerability and the exposure of the element. How do we describe risk? Qualitatively, with the risk matrix, where we have the hazard on the vertical axis divided in five categories, and you have the consequences on the horizontal axis, also divided in five categories. As an example, it could be divided in seven or in three. And the severity increases with the higher number. And then you define areas with low risk, medium risk, and high risk. And then you can put your different scenarios of threats and consequence in this matrix. And even if this is a simple method, 
Just bringing up the discussion of the uncertainties always leads to an improved understanding of what is important for design, safety evaluation, and what needs to be monitored. But you can also describe risk in a quantitative manner. In this plot, we have the annual likelihood of an event occurring on the vertical axis. So it's 10 to minus 1 per year, annual. And on the horizontal axis, the number of fatalities. This is a log-log plot. And we've assembled all the national guidelines for dams and dikes and man-made slope in the gray area shown here. The black line is the one that's most commonly used in different countries. Uh, and then you, if, if you, if you have a, a dam that you are in this location here, then to do mitigation, you try to reduce the likelihood that an event would occur in the vertical direction or reduce the elements at risk, their vulnerability or building some, uh, some roads where they can escape, for example. Very often, the number 10 to minus 4 per year is used uh, to evaluate risk or to compare risk. What does that number re mean? We know that the risk of a dam is never zero because there are uncertainties, but so is the risk of us <laughs> dying just because we're alive. We, we always are exposed to potential death. And these are statistics uh, in Canada and the United States, they're very close, of the annual probability of dying of all causes as a function of one's age. And it seems, based on those statistics, that the period in our life when we're at lowest risk of dying of all causes is between age 5 and 10 or 12. But after that, as we grow older, the risk of dying it just increases. And an interpretation, if you're 90 years old, the number is 10 to minus 1. So there's a 10% chance of dying in the next year. That is what is annual risk. So this is one of the reasons why 10 to minus 4 is often cited in different uh, publications. How you do the risk analysis, I've tried to assemble how we do it for all methods. And the important point of the ones in red brainstorming on the triggers and failure modes, and then construction of a logical diagram. It could be the risk matrix, it could be an event tree, fall tree, bow tie a diagram, a dam maturity matrix, Bayesian network, just to cite maybe seven of the 20 methods that are used today, where you estimate likelihood and consequence for each scenario. And then you calculate or estimate, if qualitative, the probabilities for each scenario occurring and the ensuing consequences. And then you compare these values with the national guidelines or with dam failure statistics published in ICOL or by FEL, among others. What's important is how you assign the probabilities event in the qualitative method, but also the quantitative method. It's, it's qualitative, but the statistics from observations, model tests, laboratory institute tests, data analysis, they are used. If we use the calculations from physical mechanism, stability, seepage, deformation by finite element, earthquake response analysis. Uh, you use earlier experience with similar constructions or internal drainage, for example. And then you can discuss at the workshop and reach consensus, including engineering judgment and expert opinion, just as you do in any deterministic analysis. These assigned probabilities or estimates need to be justified and based on a demonstrable reasoning. It's not speculation. So it brings us to reflect that what should be the target for safety during the life of a dam? Is it a fixed deterministic safety factor appropriate to ensure the same safety level throughout the life, the life of a dam. A dam in operation for 50 years represents 50 years of evaluated experience under operational and environmental loads. The uncertainties at the time of design and construction will have changed with time. 
A target annual failure probability allows a more consistent comparison of the safety level at different times of the life of a dam than a fixed safety factor. In conclusion, the purpose of risk assessment is to improve dam safety and risk management. The profession can no longer avoid risk-informed decision-making. Quantitative risk-based dam safety decision-making provides a powerful tool to not only identify critical potential failure modes, but also prioritize how to address these weaknesses in a systematic, objective, and cost-effective manner. Risk analysis is fundamentally changing the landscape of dam safety in the U.S., as quoted by John France and Jennifer Williams, and risk analysis helps develop effective surveillance and monitoring programs and emergency response. And visual portrayals of risk in a diagram, for example, or a matrix, are effective communication tools for stakeholders and public. So risk-based dam safety analysis has become holistic. It's a tool for recognizing, understanding, and managing uncertainties and risk. The potential ways a dam can fail are also evaluated, and risk reduction measures can be implemented as a function of these. And for a portfolio of dam, a risk assessment helps identify which dam and which specific failure modes cause the greatest risk. Available resources can then be allocated to more effectively reduce the risk. Thank you very much for the, your attention.